This month we have been talking all about inspiration. We'd still like to know who or what inspires you. This morning I'm going to talk with a woman who inspires me. She's a 60-year-old, legally blind musician, singer, and songwriter. She says that it is her goal to inspire others to share their talents and pursue their dreams. She's doing just that. Mary, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, Jenna. I um, feel so honored and privileged to be here with you. Mary, I understand that you just recently relocated here from Texas. Why Key West? Well, Joe and I have been searching for a place to live that really expresses our need to be near water. So we had lived in Clear Lake, Texas, and Seabrook area, and that didn't satisfy us. It, was a, it just wasn't quite right. And so we were traveling this summer, touring with a friend of ours, Gary Williams, who's here now, and um, he said he wanted to go back to Key West. So we were, had done four or five weeks of Nashville and Boston and Maine, and we were all going to go home. And then he said, let's go to Key West. And we were like, okay. And we mm -hmm. heard so much about it. Mm -hmm. And um, when we got here in August, we were amazed at how nice the people were and how beautiful it was. And we were here for a month. We rented two different rooms, and the three of us stayed together, plus Zona. Mm -hmm. And then after the first or second day, we were like, we're moving here. So after mm -hmm. the month, we found another place to live where we are now. We called it home, got out of our lease, and went back to Texas, sold everything, and 10 days later came back here. And here you are. And we're just <laughs> thrilled to be here. Well, good. Mary, I can tell with you that you are so passionate, not just about life, but about your music. Have you always been a musician? Uh, yes. I've always loved music and been an appreciator of all kinds of music. I used to sit with the radio all the time when I was a little kid, took piano lessons, voice lessons. Um, so I've always wanted to perform and be on stage. Mm -hmm. Now Mary, you are legally blind. Were you born legally blind? Uh, yes, I, um, I was born prematurely. I was three months early in 1953. And back then they put babies in an incubator. I was in an incubator for a little bit over four months. And um, I got diagnosed with my legal blindness this past 2008. So uh, you went that long without yeah. being I think having my, the my diagnosis? My parents, I think, were a little bit... My mom told me she had a lot of shame from when I, she came back from the hospital of me being born and she, I was still there and she came home. Um, I think it was just, um, the eye doctor that diagnosed me said it's, it's pretty common for people of my age group and coming from Long Island and to have families that didn't know how to deal with a child that had something different and didn't, were, were reluctant to follow up and find out exactly what it was. Now, Mary, you said that you've always enjoyed music. So did you run into some people along the way that would tell you, you can't do this, you can't play music? Um, well, it started with my family. I think my mother was afraid for my life if I got into the music business because the music business was a dirty business. Um, and I can't say there were people that I can think of who told me I couldn't. I always excelled in school and music class mm -hmm. and I think I was the one that told myself that I couldn't do it. I was afraid to outshine my girlfriends. I was afraid to leave them behind if something good happened for me. I was afraid to be better than my mom because she always wanted to sing. Mm -hmm. So I really stopped myself more than any one person. I did, I do remember now that you asked me, I went to camp, I won't mention the guy's name, mm -hmm. I went to sleepaway camp and the guy used to call me guitar picker mm -hmm. and he used to make mm -hmm. fun of me all the time. He was one of the administrators there mm -hmm. and I had just gotten a guitar and started to learn how to play it. I was in probably 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of many people. Duke Ellington, when my, high my college choir sang with Duke Ellington, he, when he did a sacred concert before he passed away, and I think in 72. So we did a sacred concert with him, and he said to me and a few other of the girls that were doing solos, never stop singing. Mm 
Good, good. So, I'm glad you so, had someone tell you yeah. that. And you haven't stopped singing, no, Mary. No, no, no. You're gifted. You are Thank definitely you very much. gifted. Thank you, and you will be singing here in Key West on the island. In fact, you recently had a show at Kelly's. I had two past shows at Kelly's Caribbean The Muse, which is mm -hmm. run by Abby Skibinski. It's a new venue that they started upstairs. I will be there this Saturday night, the 30th. Mm -hmm. And um, over the summer when I was here, I played at. Uh, the Rose Tattoo, which was used to be uh, Cowboy Bills. Now they resold it to the guy who's Cowboy Bill. And I'll be singing this Sunday, December 1st, at the Banana Cafe, which I got that job from uh, Daryl Brook, who owns the Grateful Guitar, mm -hmm. sent me over to Lee McManus, who started the Art Key West, mm -hmm. and he offered me to play at the Banana Cafe from uh, 12 to 3 this coming Sunday, weather permitting. Oh, great. So yeah, I'm excited. I've had some great auditions and I'm hoping mm -hmm. that people will call back and mm -hmm. want to hire me seasonally. I, I understand that there are people here that have been playing and are here longer than I and so I have to, you know, be patient mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just thrilled. This is the highlight, <laughs> being here on your show. Well, it's a highlight to have you here this morning. Like Thank I said, you. Mary, you inspire me, and we are going to give our viewers a little preview of your music. You're going to play for us this morning. What are you playing? I'm going to play for you a song that my husband Joe Green and I wrote together called Flatline, and uh, it was inspired by a friend who uh, is having some emotional and mental problems and it turned into being a song about a woman who has lost her passion for life and who has felt the need to hide and not express. And I have been there in my life. I've been mm -hmm. that person. I'm not there at this moment, but I have certainly been there. Great. So. Let's hear it. Oh. Out loud. 